Hello and welcome back to Microbial Concepts. So this is another topic from MSc Microbiology Practical Exams where we are going to study about a practical topic that is isolation of thermophiles. Okay, and also we will discuss some viva questions at the end of this video. So already a video is uploaded on isolation of mesophiles. So that is the uh, another topic which you have in your masters, mostly in your second year. Okay, so today we will focus on thermophiles. So thermophiles are organisms which grow. Mostly we refer them as thermophiles when organisms grow or they are able to grow above 45 degrees Celsius. But mainly the optimal growth temperature is between 60 to 80 degrees Celsius. And while those are able to grow above 80 degrees Celsius, they are referred as thermophiles. Okay, so these are the two terms and they are slightly different so you may get a question of what is thermophile and what is hyperthermophile so the difference is in their optimal growth temperatures now thermophiles they are inhabitants of various ecological niches such as deep sea hydrothermal vents then terrestrial hot springs or say volcanic sites uh, tectonically active faults etc even uh, if you go deeper in a compost pit and even in deep organic landfills you will find some thermophiles which are growing so as a consequence of growth at higher temperatures and unique micromolecular properties thermophiles can possess high metabolism they have physically and chemically stable enzymes and even at lower growth rate but still having uh, still they have lower growth rates they can yield or they can give higher end products okay if compared to mesophilic species then why they survive at higher temperatures or why they are known as thermophiles so the reasons are in membrane lipids play important role in regulating membrane activity okay and its composition is particularly responsible for thermostability now thermo refers to temperature and stability okay so high temperature stability is uh, provided by the lipids which are present in their membrane the enzymes of thermophiles they usually are known as thermostable enzymes and they play an important role at higher temperatures due to stabilizing forces they there are some ionic characters then metal binding and disulfide bridges then proteins are also uh, important and they play a major role in thermostability because of extra hydrogen bonding, ionic interaction, or polar interactions, and they are crucial part of a protein molecule. Okay. Then lastly, uh, genetic apparatus. That means um, genetic makeup of a particular organism. Now here we are focusing on thermophile. So genetic makeup of a thermophile, if you consider, then they have a higher GC content. And in case of tRNA, a AU pair is replaced with GC pair. Okay, so that's the reason they are able to survive at higher temperatures. Now some examples of enzymes which are extracted from different organisms and their optimum temperature act for activity and some applications okay so at least try to remember four or five examples from the uh, viva point of view and if you get a simple question like what are the applications of thermophilic organism then here are some applications so like uh, breast cancer treatment where aspergillus Tyrus is used, then remediation of textile dyes where geobacillus thermo uh, catenulatus is used. Okay, then crude oil degradation where bacillus species is used. Again, bacillus species is used for heavy metal recovery. Okay, so these are some applications uh, which you can mention. Then about cultivation or isolation of thermophiles. So, uh, it can be done in our microbiology lab, but a slight modification is required. So what is that? So for isolation of thermophiles, we need to remember that at higher temperatures, that is mostly for uh, we work on mesophiles and max temperature is 37 degree where we incubate our plates or flask. 
but in case of thermophiles we need higher temperature that is 50 degree or 70 degree celsius so at these higher temperatures there is more evaporation of both solid and liquid media so at these temperatures that is above 55 degree celsius it is preferable to use more agar that is between 2 to 4 percent so say generally we add 2 grams for uh, 100 ml so now you need to increase your concentration double it okay so at higher temperatures above 70 degree celsius it is necessary to use other solid media such as silica gel and gelerite okay so that is the care you need to uh, take then about materials now what all you require so you require sample so sample collection is tricky in case of thermophiles because uh, you don't have access easy access to all those uh, niches that we just discussed in the previous slide okay so simple uh, sample collection point can be a compost pit or a hot spring water point if you have uh, nearby your location so in case of collecting sample from compost you need to dig in deep a little deep so that you can get some thermophilic bacteria growing in that particular compost pit okay so that's the proper sample collection then you need sterile media like nutrient broth and nutrient agar but in case of agar plate you need 3% of agar that is to that is used then sterile saline so say you got a compost sample so now you need to incubate it at 70 degrees celsius because after collection your sample was a little bit say for some time at normal room temperature so you now need to incubate it for 70 degrees celsius for 24 to 48 hours to dry it completely okay because there will be a moisture present so we also don't want that moisture and we don't want our thermophilic bacteria to dry die okay so now one gram of this sample is weighed and is added to 9 ml of sterile saline and is kept on shaker for proper mixing after that you, you take one ml of supernatant from this uh, saline suspension and you in inoculate that in sterile nutrient broth and incubate at 50 degrees celsius okay so now you're first incubating your nutrient broth at 50 degree and just we are going to observe whether there is microbial growth or not so growth in the form of turbidity is a positive sign okay so that is what we need to observe at 50 degree then this was inoculated in sterile nutrient broth and was serially passaged at higher temperature so serial, serially passage it means several tubes or several flask were um, inoculated by using the first uh, tube of nutrient or tube or broth of nutrient broth okay and now those were incubated at 70 degrees celsius so again after incubation growth in a form of turbidity was observed and this is the indicator that yes there are some thermophilic bacteria which are present in your sample so now to get isolated colonies from broth your broth was used and it was diluted a little bit as there is say more turbidity so you dilute it and then you streak it on sterile nutrient plate and incubate at 70 degrees celsius for 24 hours so say you got isolated colonies so now you need to proceed for colony morphology and do some biochemical test by referring to Berge's manual of determinative bacteriology okay and try to identify your isolates till genus level so this is the uh, practical that you will perform for isolation of thermophiles now some viva questions that you may get so first is what are thermophiles then how are they different from mesophiles and sacrophiles then what is the purpose of studying them give five examples of thermophilic bacteria economic importance or say same can be uh, answered for applications of thermophilic bacteria then what are the reasons for their survival at higher temperatures we have discussed this then concentration of agar used while media preparation and why even this is uh, mentioned in video then sample used in practical for isolating thermophiles okay so you need to mention what sample you got and where you from where you got it and 
uh, the way you did sample collection. Then are archaebacteria thermophiles? Okay, so all of these are very basic viva questions. If you don't find answers for some, you can Google out or check my other videos. Um, so for example, for this particular ninth question, a video is uploaded related to archaebacteria. Okay, so in that video, you will get the answer for this question. Okay, so I hope this video is helpful. So do like my video, do share my video with your friends and do subscribe to my channel and thank you for watching.